During Lent we are called to conversion. Pope Francis says, Sin leads man to consider himself the God of creation, to see himself as its absolute master, and to use it not for the purpose built by the Creator, but for his own interests. Let us leave behind our selfishness and self-absorption and turn to Jesus' task. Let us stand beside our brothers and sisters in need, sharing our spiritual and material goods with them. Lent must be a time to welcome Christ's victory over sin and death into our lives and attract its transforming power to all of creation. These are the underlining themes of Father Tom Casey's sermons during the next six Sundays of Lent. Therefore, here is your homilist, Father Tom, for this Sunday in Lent. Hello and welcome everybody to today's Sunday sermon, which is the fifth Sunday in Lent. Well, how is it going? I hope Lent is been fruitful for you. We're coming towards the end now and we find that these readings today that we have at Mass are all about the resurrection. In the Gospel we have the raising of Lazarus. The people saw the glory of God in a man who was dead for four days. Why four days? Because the Jews had a thing that if you died you could still wake up after three days, or during the three days. Now, this is the fourth day, proving that Lazarus was dead. Now, here we have a, a saying that Jesus calls him out of the tomb. Come out of there. Jesus calls out to him. And we see that this is a very significant calling, an invitation it's not so much a command, it's an invitation. And that we too are being called by Jesus to come out of our tombs. Because when we're living in sin, it's the same as living in a tomb. A tomb is where you put the dead. Now, we with our sins are wallowing in sin and death and annihilation. Pope Francis comments on the resurrection of Lazarus at St. Peter's Square on the 5th Sunday of Lent, 6th of April, 2014. And I quote him, Jesus speaks like this, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Direct quotation from John chapter 11, verses 25 and 26. With this word of the Lord, we believe that the life of whoever believes in Jesus and follows his commandments after death will be transformed into new life, full and immortal, forever and ever. Quoting Pope Francis once more, he says, He calls us insistently to come out of the darkness of that prison in which we are enclosed and may be content with our false and selfish and mediocre life. And it's an invitation to true freedom, to allow ourselves to be seized by these words of Jesus, who repeats them from day to day. Come out of that hole you are in, that tomb you are in. And when we feel the, 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 the pressures of life, when we feel even downhearted and when we have no joy and zest for life, Jesus is saying, come out. There is a great poet called Francis Thompson. He wrote a great poem called The Hound of Heaven. And this is a very interesting poem from the point of view in that he looks upon God as like a dog, a hound who is following a rabbit or a hare. He keeps after us, trying to catch us. And we, for some reason, are trying to escape from God. So it's a complete reversal of what maybe we think, that God is up there in heaven and he's very far away, and, uh, well, it's up to us if we want to come to him or not. No, he's actually seeking us out. 
And I think it's a wonderful imagery of who God is and the God that Jesus revealed. He seeks us out. Come out of the darkness. The same thing. Our belief in the resurrection is often seen as something that will happen when we die or on the last day, on the resurrection from the dead. But this is something also that can be experienced now. Now in the present we find the Lord cleared of all these thoughts. Our minds may be uh, compared to uh, what we call a monkey tree. A tree where many, many schools of monkeys live. And they're there chattering, they're talking and chatting and making a lot of noise. Maybe like our birds here, who seem to be always with me when I'm trying to say a few words like this. But I believe they are God's creatures. And they are too there reminding us the present is the moment where God exists. This is a resurrection experience. Our minds, you see, are clogged with thoughts of the past, maybe guilt of the past, and things that happened in the past. Of course, it can't be of the future because we don't know the future, but we can be worried about the future, which is another illusion because the future is never the now. The real present moment is the moment you've got right now to stop and think and breathe and listen to the birds. And it's interesting that the Eucharist is the sacrament of the real presence. Presence, being present. Here is where we find the Lord. And this is a resurrection experience. True liberation is to be found in living the present moment fully. If we could just live the moment as it is. No past, no future. Even though they have, they, we experience those. But to be present, not to be led by them, not to be dominated by the future and the past. In the moment we have. And that is prayer. Simple prayer. But difficult to do because of our world that we live in, which is full of noise and distractions. You know the greatest weapon that the devil has is distraction. To distract you. I want to read my prayers. Happens to me a lot. And, oh, something distracts me. I have to go there, I have to do this. And This is our invitation today. Resurrection in the future, yes. Uh, but right now, we have a taste of the things to come, the great things to come, when we live for the moment that God gives us. Now, we can't do that every moment of our lives. But in actual fact, you know, why? Why has that happened that we can't? I don't know myself, but we should aim for it. Be present, present to the world, present to people when they're speaking with us. Be present to the presence of God in all around us, nature, in human beings we see, the beauty of mountains and hills and valleys and rivers and lakes and the beautiful world that God the Creator has given us. I will finish with a quote from St. Francis de Sales, who said, The past must be abandoned to God's mercy, the present to our fidelity, and the future to divine providence. The past must be abandoned to God's mercy. The mercy of God looks after that. The present to our fidelity, faithful to the present moment, and the future to divine providence. So I'll repeat it now. The past must be abandoned to God's mercy, the present to our fidelity, and the future to divine providence. All manner of things will be well. Don't worry about the future so much. When will I die? How will it happen? Will it be tomorrow? Will it be today? You know, we know nothing. The only certainty we have is from the gospel. Life everlasting. And even the presence of Jesus with us now. This has been a wonderful Sunday readings which have given us great food to think about, great food for thought. But we must be aware 
it is Lent, we are aware that the resurrection is what we are jumping up to now when we come to the uh, celebration of Easter. I am hoping you have enjoyed your time so far. We are very near the finish now. But uh, continue with your fasting, extra prayer, doing good works, and try and get to confession if possible. May God bless you and help you on the final hurdle now. Next Sunday will be Passion Sunday.